So you're not going to believe what happened. Ilhan Omar got booed at a concert in her own district by Somalians. You think I'm kidding? Let's watch a little bit of it. Yes. Is she that bad at rapping? (laughs) (laughs) So she's at is that a concert by a guy named Saldan Sirar. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but he's not used to being booed. Let's watch a little bit more. He tried to get them to stop, but they wouldn't. So I enjoyed that, but uh, I didn't understand why they were booing her. But an article in the Gray Zone appeared by Ann Garrison, and it's called Ilhan Omar's Meddling in the Horn of Africa Earns Boos at the Somali American Concert. So let's introduce our guest. She's an independent journalist based in San Francisco Bay Area. She is a contributing editor at Black Agenda Report, as well as a contributor to Bayview, Black Star News, Counterpunch, The Gray Zone, and Pacifica Radio, where this show originated. In 2014, she received the Victor Inagrab, oh, I can't pronounce that, Humaza Democracy and Peace Prize for her reporting on the conflict. Please welcome Ann Garrison. Hi, Ann. How are you? I'm fine. How do you pronounce that award? Victor and Gabriel Mahosa, and uh, that conflict is the conflict in the Great Lakes region of Africa, which is more in Central Africa. Okay. We're talking about the Horn of Africa today. Okay, so I, and I'll show people where it is. This is where the, this is the Horn of Africa. There's Ethiopia. There's Somalia. Okay, across the thing is uh, Saudi Arabia. Oh, hey, don't forget Djibouti. Got to talk about Djibouti. Djibouti. Djibouti Djibouti's there. right here, right? Djibouti's right yeah, there. I have I have a little crib sheet. Okay. I'm so nervous that I got a little crib sheet and the number of uh, there are eight foreign military bases in Djibouti. Really. The U.S., Germany, Spain, Italy, France, the U.K., China, and Saudi Arabia. So why do you they're think all- they're why do you think they're so interested in having military bases in Djibouti in the Horn of Africa? Uh, extremely geostrategic, lots of resources, uh, right on the Red Sea, the Arabian Sea, the Gulf of Aden, right across from Yemen and the Gulf states. So again, it's a strategic military because there's military wise because there's a lot of natural resources there to get to and what's ha- what's happening in Ethiopia right here so now what's so tell us we I know that there's um the United States is trying to overthrow the Ethiopian government by backing with these uh, rebels and of course we're on the wrong side there and but those were Somalians that were booing her can you tell us why the Somalians were booing her yeah, she had a lot. Well, for one, they think that she promised some programs for youth and so forth. They've got um, some crime and problems with youth being drawn into it. They're in Minneapolis, and they think she didn't do enough of what she promised to help. But what seems to be more significant is her policy in Somalia, where she's from, where she was instrumental in having a very, very popular president removed from office recently. That would be Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed. So here, let me let me just show it. So they were upset with her role in the removal of Somali President Mohammed Abdullah Mohammed, or he's also known as Fermajo. Is that how you say it? Fermajo. 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 That means cheese, and he got that nickname because he likes cheese. Oh, okay, and and so he she he was very popular, and she was uh, behind getting rid of him, uh, and that was one of the examples of the congresswoman's role in advancing U.S. meddling in the Horn of Africa, and so now they got rid of him, 
in Somalia as their leader. And as soon and as soon as he was gone, and even before the formal transition of power, an oil and gas extraction contract with the US with a US corporation that Formaggio had blocked was back in play. Oh, so, so some good came out of this. So some good came out of it. <laughs> well also also before the formal transition of power Biden announced that he was reintroducing troops into Somalia. Yes. Uh, everyone in the, in the everyone I've talked to in the three major countries in the Horn, that's Eritrea, Somalia, and Ethiopia, has told me that they were a lot better off when Trump was in office because Trump just wasn't very interested in them. He just left them alone. As so, soon as Biden came into power, even on the very night that he was elected, on November 3rd, the TPLF, which the U.S. backed for many, many years while they brutally ruled Somalia for 27 years, uh, attacked uh, the Northern Command military base there in Ethiopia, meaning it, it attacked its own army. It was, it was a branch of the army and it started a civil war on the evening that Joe Biden was elected. So to sum, so to sum up, and it seems like uh, Ilhan Omar is in bed with the military industrial complex in Africa. Is that basically what's happening? It sure, it sure sounds like that. I'll tell you, when Biden announced that he was reintroducing his troops into Somalia, uh, Trump had withdrawn them. Yes. We, uh, it I, didn't I've, stop Trump from bombing them, but, but Trump had withdrawn the troops. Is it uh, fair to say, yeah. and like really kind of what the, those people were mad about is that she sided with crackers over cheese? <laughs> <laughs> well, crackers. That would, I think clan clansmen, not not Klan's clan clansmen. I might be using that. That I just meant you clan, as clan, clan. I just got excited by saying the cheese thing. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I lost where. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, as soon as he announced that he was reintroducing his troops into Somalia. It was announced by some national security state reporters in the New York Times, and a very bland report, as though this was nothing to write home about. Uh, but the comments were some of the best writing I've ever read in the New York Times. There were like almost 200 comments, and people were furious, and they were eloquent, eloquent, and most of them were furious because Biden was introducing troops into another country. Why, right after the debacle in Afghanistan? But there was one person who was from Somalia who wrote a really eloquent response about how corrupt this election had been, about how the U.S., the U.A.E., and Kenya, Kenya had bribed the parliamentarians who elected it. It was not a one-man, one-vote election. Like, the Democratic forces there had been pushing for a one-man, one person, one person, excuse me, one person, one vote election, uh, which they've never had. They were pushing for that. Formaggio was pushing for it. The U.S. opposed it. And so, let, let me go back to this map. So, okay. it, so, so, so the president of Somalia, who we, who ju they just got rid of, he had for entered now. for now. For now, they got rid of him for now. He's still around. Yeah, he's. They got rid of him for now. The United States got rid of. They immediately sent troops back into Somalia. They right. immediately sent in a U.S. corporation to extract the oil, and. Right. Ilhan Omar was supportive of, of this, which is why people in her own town uh, from Somalia are booing her at a rap concert. Also, the president of Somalia hooked up with, how do you say the name of this country? Eritrea? Eritrea. Okay. Eritrea. So they had actually uh, started a peace agreement because there, there's a war going on and they actually had a peace agreement. Well, the United States can't have that. So. Exactly. And that's so whenever there's a peace agreement, the United States has to come in. And now the United States is yes, is supporting the rebel group inside Ethiopia. And they don't uh, they don't want to have a peace agreement there. So just like in Ukraine, the United States doesn't want to have a peace agreement with Russia. They don't want to have a peace agreement over here in the Horn of Africa. And Ilhan Omar is on the wrong side of everything in Africa, everything. So I know people look at Ilhan Omar in the United States as some super progressive lefty liberal is going to stand up for the people of Africa. But she is pushing military industrial complex and CIA policies in Africa. Isn't that what's happening, Anne? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's what's happening. <laughs> Regarding that peace agreement, 
uh, it was an agreement between Somalia, Ethiopia, and Eritrea. We called it the, oh, I can't remember the complex name, but it was, uh, uh, the shorthand was the tripartite agreement between those three countries. Ethiopia and Eritrea had been at war for uh, decades when the TPLF, that's the group that the U.S. was back for so many years, and the one who started the Civil War on the evening that <laughs> Biden was elected. Um, <clears throat> Ethiopia and Eritrea, um, when Eritrea was, <coughs> excuse me, ruled by the TPLF, had been at war for decades. When the TPLF was finally pushed out of power uh, in a matter of months, the new prime minister negotiated peace with Eritrea. And then a few months later, there was there was an agreement on regional cooperation between Eritrea, Somalia, and Ethiopia. And, you know, I hate to say it, but Trump was in power and he was just leaving them alone. And, and a new kind of hope of peace and development and regional cooperation emerged in the Horn. It was dashed when Biden became president, much more aggressive. And so here's the part that people don't want to hear. And this is the part that they don't ever say in the United States media. But I'm going to say it here and then people will take me out of context and attack me, uh, which is what they like to do. But <laughs> so let's go back to this map. So now there was a peace agreement between Somalia, Ethiopia and, and Nigeria and, and, Tria. and Tria. And they had a peace agreement. They had been fighting for a decade. And Trump's big idea was to let them deal with the problem themselves. And he was hands off. And the people of this region, the Horn of Africa, were more appreciative of Donald Trump's handling of the situation than they are of Biden. In fact, they said when when Trump was in was in power, he didn't screw with their system. But now that Biden, as soon as Biden got elected, he puts troops back in Somalia. They start extracting natural resources. He starts funding the rebels to overstart a civil war. And again, that's exactly what the United States always does. That's our classic playbook of imperial and hegemony and we're doing it now under biden so it was better for these people in the horn of africa under trump than it is under biden you, you know what this reminds me of kind of when uh remember back when cecil the lion got shot and everybody was mad because that dentist yeah and so i don't remember what country i want to say kenya i could be wrong but an african guy wrote to new york times and he's like do you guys just hate us because we're african like you know lions kill us and like you know we need dentists and not lying <laughs> like you know letter but like, do you just not care at all about how? And the answer is no, they don't. They care about like they you like Ilhan Omar is supposed to be representation, but not like you know representation. Right. She's she's supposed to be, like, supposed to be a, she's a, she's the identity politic nod. Poster. Yeah, she's not actually representing their interests. Yeah. Right. Anything? No, wait, there's something we should say to be fair here, and I don't know the details of this, but uh, Ilhan Omar is known for speaking out for Palestine. Yes, she is. She is. Uh, and Donald Trump was the absolute worst. Was the worst for Palestine. Palestine. I mean, they, they named a street and a square after him, and it was so bad that Human Rights Watch actually turned around. I mean, Norman Finkelstein wrote and talked about this. Human Rights Watch actually turned around on Palestine, in part because its wealthy Jewish donor base turned around because of Trump's closeness to Netanyahu and because of Black Lives Matter. They they became embarrassed and became acceptable for Human Rights Watch to speak out for Palestinians. Okay, so I'm not sure what all that's about. Um, but another thing about Trump, to be fair, is that he left them alone. But as he was leaving office, he made this cockney statement about blowing up the dam. A lot of what happens in this whole region is about the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Uh huh. Uh, actually, 85% of the Nile water are in Ethiopia. And they built this dam. It's the seventh largest dam in the world and the largest dam in Africa. And it promises to deliver electricity to all of Ethiopia and then up and down in the Rift Valley. They're already selling electricity to other countries south of Ethiopia. And part of the tension here is that, you know, Egypt has the Great Aswan Dam, and they're competing to sell electricity to these other countries, but they're also competing for the water. And 
Egypt keeps bringing up these treaties, these most of the old colonial treaties, to claim that it has the right to all the Nile waters. Well, 85% of them originate in Ethiopia. So, oh. Yeah, that's what's called the Blue Nile, although they call it the Abai. <laughs> they call it the Abai River. Um, but uh, Egypt also doesn't seem to want Ethiopia to emerge as a regional powerhouse. They want the Nile, they want all the Nile waters, and they don't want to see Ethiopia become so powerful and compete with them to sell electricity. Well, Egypt and Israel are allied, so because Trump was allied with Israel, near the end of his presidency, he made this talk that made me comment about how Egypt might blow up that dam. Well, the dam's very heavily guarded, the dam's finished, it's producing electricity, it's selling electricity beyond Ethiopia's borders. So that seems unlikely, but this hassling about the dam continues, and it seems very likely that Egypt is funding uh, the TPLF and a lot of these other rebel movements inside Ethiopia, uh, because there was a leaked 2012 cabinet meeting in which they said, well, we don't like what's going on here, we don't like uh, Ethiopia building this big dam uh, and claiming some of the mountain waters, 85% of which are in Ethiopia. And so we should fund these various guerrilla movements in Ethiopia. So this is one of the, uh, the other, you know, biggest, biggest threats to all the, the, the potential, all the hope in this region that rose, as I said, when Trump was president, and he just left them alone. Um, in both Somalia and in Ethiopia, you have an attempt at nation building to overcome tribalism, in Ethiopia tribalism, and in Somalia clans. And I think everybody here knows enough about U.S. foreign policy to know that U.S. claims it's going in to, to promote democracy but instead it promotes ethnic division, and in the case of Somalia, clan division, which makes it impossible for these countries to emerge with all the potential that they have. So, it, again, it turns out that the United States and our allies are actually the terrorists. <laughs> We're the oh, speaking, speaking of terrorists, let me tell you about that. I've been sitting out on these Twitter spaces. You know what a Twitter space is? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay, so... Um, I meant to tell you this at the beginning since I get the feeling it's a comedy show. Um, <laughs> I'm in a Twitter space yesterday with a lot of Somalians, and they're all screaming. <laughs> they're all screaming at me about everything the U.S. has done to them. And I <laughs> interrupt Did you say you're them. welcome? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I interrupted a few times to say, look, look, I know that the U.S. is a bad actor here, a very bad actor. And that's everything I've written about it has said they're bad actors, but they couldn't really stop. <laughs> and so I finally said, okay, um, I owe this to them. It's my job to do penance for what my government has done here. <laughs> oh, and here's, here's when at the end I said, well, okay, I already wrote about this for the gray zone. Since we spent all this time, let me, let me tell you what I can do. I think I might have a chance to be on the Jimmy Dore show. You know what the Jimmy Dore show is? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we all watch the Jimmy Dore show. <laughs> oh, well, that's good to hear. Well, we've covered the Horn of Africa before with uh, someone, a news reporter from there. So we got the straight dope. So we kind of knew a little bit about what's happening over there before Hermela. before you. So, yes, yes that's right, Hermela. Hello. And uh, she she gave us a lot of great information. So uh, and and your article, I want to remind everybody to check out your article. It's at the Gray Zone. It's called Ilhan Omar's Meddling in Horn of Africa Earns Booze at Somali American Concert. It was published July thirteenth over there. It's Ann Garrison. And thank you so much for sitting in with us and giving us the information. And thanks for writing that article. There's lots of great yeah, stuff in that. that. You know, thank I you. heard this story. I saw like three clips of Hey, she got booed, and I couldn't find what the hell they were booing. Or like I'm, I'm so glad somebody found out because I'm like, what? They just was she singing? Like why? Why did this happen? <laughs> so so you, well, go ahead. You know the Republicans. The Republicans. She has a Republican challenger, and they obviously had no understanding of what it was about at all. But they immediately got on television and said, 
Oh, it's because they're rejecting all of her progressive values. Yeah, that's not why. They're I really, heard some nonsense like that too, and I'm like, that yeah. can't be what it is. Oh, they just, they didn't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, we, uh, okay. we I'm glad we could debunk the uh, the misinformation about why people were booing her, and we could give you the real information. Ann Garrison, thanks so much for spending time with us, and everybody check out her work uh, over at the Gray Zone. Thank you very oh, much. Excuse me. There's something I forgot that I promised to do just real quick. Sure. Um, I'm also, right now, I'm working on a piece on Karen Bass, your next mayor there in L.A. Oh, no kidding. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean this Karen Bass? Karen Bass, she happens to be the vice chair of the National Endowment for Democracy. So as we all know, the National De Endowment for Democracy oh. is a CIA cutout. What they right. really do is they go and they try to overthrow governments through propaganda and stuff like that. Right. She's also the chair of the House Foreign Relations Subcommittee on Africa. So just to note, I, I promised to plug Black Agenda Report because... Margaret Kimberly gave me a little extra time to finish my piece on Karen Bass so I could be on the Jimmy Dore show. Oh, okay. So, uh, okay. well, uh, is that art? When is that article coming out? Wednesday. Okay, so we'll take a look at it. Maybe we'll bring it back to talk about Karen Bass. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Thanks again, Ann. Sacramento, back here in Los Angeles, Bakersfield, Indianapolis, Louisville, Cincinnati, Tulsa, Oklahoma City. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our shows.